This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumble, day 296. Today we're talking about how you can be useful to God. And it may feel like sometimes you are so small in this vast universe and that God is so big and that you could never help him in his mission for the world. But today we're asking the question, how can we be useful to God? And we see just in these passages today that there are 25 ways to be useful to God. Queen Elizabeth II declared on her 21st birthday broadcast, My whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. As the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, said in his address at her funeral on the 19th of September 2022, rarely has such a promise been so well kept. Her example was not set through her position or her ambition, but through whom she followed. In silent prayer, her allegiance to God was given before any person gave allegiance to her. Her service to so many people in this nation, the Commonwealth and the world had its foundation in her following Christ. In the 70 years of her reign, Queen Elizabeth has set an example of a leader who dedicated her life to the service of Christ and of others. As John Stott wrote, no higher honour could be imagined than to be an instrument in the hand of Jesus Christ, to be at his disposal for the furtherance of his purposes, to be available whenever wanted for his service, being useful to the Master and instruments for noble purposes starts with dedicating your life to him and rededicating it regularly to his service. St. Paul encourages us, become the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. How can you be useful to God? From Proverbs 25 and 26. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink, and the Lord will reward you. Like a north wind that brings unexpected rain is a sly tongue which provokes a horrified look. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well are the righteous who give way to the wicked. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honourable to search out matters that are too deep. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. First, love your enemy. If you see your enemy hungry, go buy him lunch. If he's thirsty, bring him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness and God will look after you. Second, watch your tongue. A north wind brings stormy weather and a gossipy tongue stormy looks. If you want to change your actions, start with your thoughts and words. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Third, avoid quarrelling. Better to live on the corner of the roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. On the same theme, Paul writes, Warn them before God against quarrelling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. He goes on to say, Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels and the Lord's servants must not quarrel. Fourth, Bring good news, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. We are so privileged to be able to bring the good news of Jesus. It's like cold water to a weary soul. Fifth, stand your ground, like a muddied spring or a polluted well are the righteous who give way to the wicked. Sometimes it's important to stand your ground. Sixth, do not seek honour. If you seek your own honour, you will find that true honour eludes you. It's not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honourable to seek one's own honour. Seventh, be self-controlled. 
A person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. Don't try to control others. The only person you should try to control is yourself. Self-control is one of the characteristics that make up the fruit of the Spirit. Eighth, don't worry about what others say. You do not need to fear bad publicity or slander. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. New Testament from 2 Timothy 2 You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Ninth way to be useful to God. Pass it on. It is so important to pass on the message and invest in others. Paul lays out four stages of investing in others in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. What I said and you heard entrust to reliable people who teach others. Tenth, endure hardship. Paul uses the analogy of being a soldier. Soldiers have to endure hardship. He explains, therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. Paul encourages us by going on to say that if we endure, we will also reign with him. 11. Avoid distractions. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. Keep a clear focus and avoid distractions that waste time. As a soldier, you need to keep your focus and seek to please your commanding officer. 12. Keep to the rules. Paul moves from the analogy of a soldier to that of an athlete. An athlete who refuses to play by the rules will never get anywhere. 13. Work hard. From the soldier and athlete, Paul moves to the analogy of a farmer. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. 14. Meditate on God's words. Only God can give understanding, but you have your part to play. Paul writes, reflect on what I'm saying for the Lord will give you insight into all this. 15. Focus on Jesus. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. The gospel is all about Jesus. Salvation is in Christ Jesus. 16. Correctly handle God's word. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. 17. Turn away from evil. Everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Repentance is not a one-off act. It is a continuing attitude. It involves turning away from wickedness and fleeing evil desires of youth. 18. Be a peacemaker. 
Paul urges Timothy, among other things, to pursue peace, refuse to get involved in inane discussions. They always end up in fights. God's servant must not be argumentative. Joyce Meyer writes, Strife is bickering, arguing, heated disagreement, and an angry undercurrent. Strife is dangerous and destructive. Keeping strife out of our lives requires willingness to constantly communicate and confront issues. Ask for the Holy Spirit's help to be a person who avoids strife and restores peace everywhere you go. 19. Be kind to everyone. The Lord's servant must be kind to everyone. Everyone includes everyone, not just your friends or the people you like, but all the people you come into contact with during the day, especially those who are often unappreciated, such as the person on the supermarket checkout, the person driving the bus, the person on reception, the person who helps you on the phone. 20. Learn to teach. The Lord's servants must be able to teach, and opponents must be gently instructed. Teaching is a specialist ministry, but it is also the task of every Christian. A key characteristic is gentleness. God's servant must be a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool, working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. 21. Don't be resentful. The Lord's servant must not be resentful. Resentment poisons relationships. Old Testament from Jeremiah 49 and 50 The people together will go in tears to seek the Lord their God. 22. Hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah was greatly used by God because, as he said, I have heard the message from the Lord. 23. Allow God to speak through you. Jeremiah not only heard the word of the Lord, he was prepared to speak it out, and God spoke through him. This is the word the Lord spoke through Jeremiah. Next, walk closely with the Lord. Jeremiah foretold of the days when the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek the Lord their God. This is the type of relationship God wants us to have with Him, bound together, walking closely with Him all the time. Hold tight to God. 25th, find rest in the Lord. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and caused them to roam on the mountains. They wandered over mountain and hill and forgot their own resting place. The Lord is described as your own resting place the place where you find rest for your soul. Lord, I want to be useful to you, the Master, an instrument for noble purposes, prepared to do any good work. I want to seek your face, to bind myself to you. I dedicate myself to you again today. May we as a church be useful to you, Lord. May we be a community where people find kindness, faith, love, and peace. May we bring the good news of Jesus to all those around, transforming society and changing our world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pepper adds, Proverbs 25 verse 21 says, If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. When someone has hurt or offended you, it's not always easy to be kind and generous back. Knowing that the Lord will reward you helps, and so does the thought of burning coals on their heads. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that I can be useful to you. Thank you that I can help build your kingdom. Lord, I'm sorry for where I've turned away from you and instead of building your kingdom, have broken it down. 
Forgive me, God. Help me today by your Holy Spirit to build your kingdom up with love, to speak words of truth, to speak words that give people life. Send your Holy Spirit now. Amen.